Hey everyone, I am standing by a newly planted tree because the trees for the privacy screen that we're creating with our neighbors in conjunction with them uh, has been planted, at least the tree part of it. And it was a big effort and I'll talk through how we did that. But first I just wanna show you the trees that we put in here. And I'll just tell you right now, it looks so good. Okay, we're going to start from the east end and work west. This is the shadiest end of this bed, which is great because we start here with an eastern hemlock, which wants some shade. And this particular tree is absolutely stunning. I'm glad we went for a little bit taller specimen here. Now these grow really um, quite big, although slowly, but this is a really important part of the screening. But just beautiful. And really there weren't a lot of options when you're looking at evergreens that get a certain size for shade. There's not a lot of options, so I'm very happy that this was an option for us. Now, um, I addressed sort of the woolly adelgid issue um, in previous videos, but the quick answer to that is that if you know anything about eastern hemlocks, you know that woolly adelgids are a big problem. We do not have those in Wisconsin yet. They are nearby. They may come here at some point. They are treatable. You just have to be on the lookout for them. Um, hopefully, because this is just one tree rather than a whole stand of hemlocks, hopefully they won't be too inclined to find it when they do make it to Wisconsin. Then we move over here. And over here, this is um, a, an American hornbeam. This is a native species. This is uh, uh, Carpinus carolinii fire spire. This is actually a tree that was bred in Wisconsin. Um, and so this gives us a nice vertical accent um, and, uh, and just is a nice little blocking function here back a little bit. Next up, we have the first of two pagoda dogwoods. This is Cornus alternifolia. This is another, actually everything I've showed you so far is a native here. Um, this is a multi-stem pagoda dogwood. Um, these, this will sort of grow up these branches. This will become more tree looking as this, as this grows up, although it'll still be a multi-stem tree. Absolutely, one of my favorite trees, really. Absolutely gorgeous so many times a year. It's got its flowers right now. Um, and then it gets great fall color too. I am standing in the middle of a trio of trees. Again, a really important screening portion of this project. This is uh, a Norway spruce, but it is a, a cultivar called Cupricina, Cupricina uh, which only gets about six feet wide and I think like 25 feet tall. So these will eventually grow to be very close to each other. We um, didn't make these like an equilateral triangle uh, because we didn't want them all to look totally samey samey. Um, and these are gonna grow, I think really well. Norway spruces do extremely well in our area. And this one should stay within the size range that we're looking for in this area versus the species, which gets enormous here. This is the next tree. This is Cornus moss. And uh, this is the Cornelian cherry dogwood. Uh, we have one of these already growing in our yard and I do love it. It gets yellow flowers very early in the year at the same time as the forsythia for us. And while this grows upright right now, uh, this tree as it matures gets very wide. So this is gonna be 20 feet wide uh, at some point and probably 20 feet tall. So this will, will spread out totally pernable, totally manageable. It's a multi-stem tree. As it grows, we'll likely prune up the branches at the bottom to just clear that up and give this a little bit more of a tree look, but we have the ability to do whatever we like with it. Uh, this is a really, really pretty one. Now, in time, uh, these should start developing uh, droops and uh, little berries, basically. Um, although I think that takes some age on them and ours is not old enough yet. The one that we have is not old enough to do that yet. But in time, we should actually get some berries off of this. I call this little cluster of trees my little cuties. I had to go, uh, I had to go on a bit of a mission to find these trees with any size. This is uh, Camisiparis or Camicyparis, depending on who you ask. Uh, soft serve. This is actually um, now a proven winners branded tree, um, and I didn't. They only get like eight feet tall. I didn't want to start with something too short. I didn't want to wait. And so we've planted a little trio of them here. The screening is not super important here, the high screening. What is important in this area is low screening. And these get nice and wide at the bottom. So these should do really well here. I, I really am fond of these trees. I think they're really, really cute. 
Then we have another fire spire. Now this one was listed as a shrub form, but I guess you know, the shrub form portion is starting uh, you know, a little bit higher, but this is sort of a multi-stem. So this one will get a little wider than the other ones will. Uh, but same form and we've got good repetition going on because we've got this tree and we have a third one coming in a second here. This tree right here is a Swiss stone pine. This is Pinus sembris. It's called twister because it gets little twisty needles as it ages. There's no sign of those twisty needles yet on this. Um, this tree is was a bit of a splurge for me because I've always wanted a Swiss stone pine. Uh, they actually, the nursery who got these trees from is very close to us and all these trees go grow really well there. Um, and this is just, it's a slow, it's relatively slow growing tree, but it'll get to probably 20 feet, but it's, it's stunningly gorgeous. This is also the tree that produces pine nuts or one of them. Um, although I think they need to be about 30 years old before that happens. And then you have to fight the squirrels. But I mean, this might be my favorite evergreen in the entire plan here. Here we get to our third fire spire hornbeam. So again, this is the, this is really important repetition. This is the most upright tree we have here currently. And so we've got good repetition when you look at this sort of from afar. And then lastly, we've got one more pagoda dogwood. Now, right now, this is like, we're in like early to mid morning right now. Right now, this is in um, quite a bit of sun. Uh, here we can push it a bit on these. These are sort of understory trees, but by midday, these are in shade. So actually this will be, I think this will work just fine here. Although it does look quite sunny here right now. And this is the same thing as the other one. All this one is slightly smaller. So that's the wrap up of the trees. Now let me tell you how we planted them all. So we actually hired someone to help us dig the holes and place the trees because as you might imagine, some of these trees had huge root balls. So he came down with his machinery and has this amazing auger, which of course made this uh, really easy. Now, of course I had staked out where each tree was gonna go ahead of time. And I actually wrote the name of the tree on the stakes, which is why you see them laying on the driveway because I didn't want to lose track of which tree went where because we did make a few last minute changes to the plan. Once we had those holes dug, uh, he has these little this little gripper attachment for his bobcat where he just carried the trees. Since we were paying him by the hour, what we did was we hired him to dig the holes and place the trees in the hole. And then we went back afterwards and did all the backfilling on everything. So despite having the trunks and as many other roots as we could ground out when we had the original trees here removed, there were still a ton of roots that we ran into here. In fact, so much so that before we could do this, we ended up having to go rent a stump grinder and grind on a stump that had already been ground on a bit. And then we did end up bringing in um, a small amount of topsoil, soil, only um, about five yards, about four of which we ended up using for this, um, in part to help bulk up our sandy soil and also um, to help us get a few contours in this area. We didn't want it like undulating, but a little bit of contour we thought would be good. I was very specific in how I wanted these trees planted. Um, this was not the way the guy we hired um, would have planted them, uh, but he was there helping us, so he, you know, he was just doing what we did. So the way we went about this was after all the trees were sitting by their holes, we went through and cut the bottom of the cages off. When he came around to pick up the trees, we would pull the bottom of the cages off and then we would cut the burlap off the bottom. Once they were in the hole, then we cut off the rest of the burlap and the rest of the cage. So there was nothing left on these trees except for the root ball that was there, but no burlap, no cage left on anything when we were done. Now you might notice that some of these trees look a little high. I was really worried about finding root flares on these trees because I have gotten trees in the past where the root flare is buried 10 inches below uh, the top of the root ball. And actually, these trees were all great. They, hardly any of them had um, a buried root flare. 
And actually, these trees were all great. Hardly any of them had a buried root flare, so we had to do very little correction as far as that goes. Um, so some of the trees ended up a little high, which was no problem whatsoever because we knew we weren't done really with the grading. Our neighbor has some plans for parking behind these trees. Um, and so he wanted something specific happening as far as the grading goes. So um, my whole thought was higher is better than lower. So some of these trees did, not, did end up a little high and we've gone in and we've just added soil around them, which um, has actually worked out great. All told, it took the three of us, uh, myself, Mr. Much More Patient and our neighbor, um, plus the hired help. Um, to dig the holes and place the trees. It took us four hours to plant 14 trees. Um, we were dead tired by the, the end of it, um, but that was pretty fast, actually. We had um, uh, the guy who was there to help us with placing the trees and digging the holes was there for about two hours of that. So it took us an additional two hours to backfill everything and level everything and get the trees straight and take off all the tags uh, and all that kind of thing. So now that the trees are in, the next step is to add in the shrub layer, which I've got partially laid out and I don't walk, I want. So now that the trees are in, the next step is to add in the shrub layer. And I've got some of the shrubs laid out, but there are some spots where I'd love to hear from you and get some thoughts from all of you in terms of what shrubs you think are missing from this design. So one thing you'll note when we look at this is that I'm mass planting these shrubs. Everything is being planted in large clumps. What I don't want this privacy to do is actually draw a lot of attention. I'm looking for super hardworking shrubs uh, that don't distract and don't draw your eye to it. I want this to be a beautiful backdrop. I don't want this to pull focus from the rest of the garden. So we're looking for really tough, really hardy, interesting shrubs that perform well throughout a range of seasons without necessarily putting on a giant show at any particular time of the year. So we'll start down here. Again, we're starting from the east end. Here's the hemlock. Down here, I've got Dervilla. This is Kodiak Red. Originally, I had spec Kodiak Orange for this when I went to the nursery. The Kodiak Oranges did not look good, so we went with a red. All of these are great plants. I actually have Kodiak Black growing elsewhere. That would have been a great one too. I didn't want the new fresh one, uh, fresh color, which is quite chartreuse because again, I didn't want anything too bright over here. I want texture, foliage, and What I'm looking for is interesting foliage texture in a generally green palette with some color range in it, but not like a bright, overwhelming chartreuse or a super dark purple. So this takes up this end. Now the great thing about Dervilla is that it can go shade or sun. So because this is a bit of a shadier corner, I thought it'd be perfect down here. And where you see the flags, this is where I've got some columnar boxwoods coming. Uh, it's a boxwood called Sky Tower. Uh, they just aren't here yet, so I'm saving some spots. And where you see piles of soil, or you notice that some of these trees are planted a touch high, it's because we're still refining the heights here um, and deciding sort of where we want the final grade to be. And I did want some undulations in here, so some of that has been added as well. Our next group of shrubs that I've got laid out here are clethra. There's two kinds here. Uh, most of these are 16 candles. This is a slightly taller variety with uh, great flower panicles on it. In the front row here is one called hummingbird, which grows shorter than that. So it's essentially two versions of clethra um, that will you know, get a variation of heights. Now these are good right here because this pink flag marks the low spot in both of our properties. So everything from our driveway drains right down here. There's, we've actually cut a bit of a river through here so that, um, and that's gonna go over to the neighbor when they work on their project over there is going to actually have a rain garden in the middle of their driveway. This is gonna run straight to that. We might actually put in a French drain that goes straight over there if we need to. We probably won't have to because the drainage is quite good to get over there. So this clethora, which likes some moisture, um, should actually do really well dealing with that um, drainage situation there. 
Again, we're gonna have some more boxwoods in here and this is all still clethora in here because I don't really want any shrubs in here to shield the bottom of these. I really want these to be able to grow nice and full at the bottom. Uh, these are geranium mycorrhizum that we're growing here that I pulled up a week ago. They've been just sitting under shade cloth getting watered and I popped them in today in the sun and I promise you they'll be fine because that's how tough they are. They look like hell right now, but they will be fine. Um, back here, we have um, a variety of winterberry. Well, actually just two. I think this is berry heavy. It's the red one. And then one of these is Mr. Poppins, which is the required pollinator so that we get berries on this. So I thought, you know, that those red berries in winter, when you look through here, I thought those would be really, really cool looking. And plus I've wanted to grow some winter berry. It's not the most beautiful plant in the world until you get to the berry part. So I was never really sure where I could put that in my garden. And now this is a perfect spot to do that. Now we've got a lot of open room here. Let me just show you what else we have going on before we come back to this. So back here, we've got berry heavy gold, which is quite a lot bigger. It's six to eight feet tall and wide. I actually have to see how those are gonna fit in here. Those are spaced too close right now. Um, and I have another Mr. Poppins to serve as a pollinator. I probably would have been okay with one pollinator, but we're growing these for the berries. So I wanted to make sure we had an extra, uh, an extra male there to take care of this. Okay, now, we have done a couple of things here. So let's look here first. Okay, so this is incredible hydrangea. I had these growing on the east side by the steps. They've been flopping on me, but they are beautiful plants. And I swapped those out for Haas Halo, but I brought those over here and transplanted them over here. This one was transplanted um, probably four days ago and it's looking really good. These really sad guys who I may cut back were transplanted here yesterday. So they are really suffering, especially not right now in the sun. Um, I think they're gonna be just fine. The other one is, is doing just fine, but ignore the very sad looking hydrangea right now. Yes, I should have moved this well before it had leafed out when it was dormant. I know, absolutely, but I didn't. And that's just how it goes sometimes. This guy was kind of, um, this one was just broke off of that one when I moved it. It was clearly something that had rooted itself um, uh, air layered. So uh, he became his own plant. So knowing all that, this is the area where I think I need another shrub. Now I think I might be looking for two or three shrubs here. For one, I'd like something really quite short and petite along the front here. And maybe we could do something, you know, slightly taller. I don't really want to go over four feet or so in height here. If there was something great that was a little bit over that, we could make that work. But I'm not interested in something that's like eight feet tall here. So we're, you know, we're looking kind of, you know, through this area down here in front for the shorter ones and then something a little bit more in back. Now the neighbor has, if you see these stakes here, they, they have, um, this will be, temporary parking so they're going to plant grass there they're little diagonal parking spots and they would like to plant nepeta um, along those triangles and so that's what they're going to do on their side so um, art which that's south so that doesn't affect they can plant that there with no problem doesn't affect anything we're doing here i just have to make sure that my shrubs don't creep into that area because remember most of this is the neighbor's property so so if you have suggestions, I mean, maybe I should be looking at something like an aronia. Maybe I should be looking at, well, I don't know. You tell me what I should be looking at. This is mostly sun down here. Um, it does get a little shadier on this end. So, you know, look at, think about, think about part sun would be a fine thing um, to think about for here. Uh, Hardy in zone five. Let me know what you think I should plant here. Maybe I should repeat something else that I already have. You know, I really dug into that clethora and bought a lot of clethora and I started thinking maybe that wasn't such a good idea because I've never grown it. <laughs> maybe it's not going to like it here and I have like, I don't know, 17 of them or something like that. So I really bought in big time to the clethora. So if you have, so let me know your shrub ideas that you think I should grow here. Think something shorter and maybe something a little taller, nothing too flashy, nothing that I have to do any kind of special fertilizing or special pruning on because we're not doing that with this. Oh, and remember, I do have boxwoods coming, so there will be like probably trios of boxwoods dotted throughout here as well. We'll probably do a video on those separately when those come. Just one quick last note here. So this is the neighbor's cottage. Their house is over here, which you can't really see. 
a lot of people said, why are you covering up this view when you've got this beautiful borrowed view of the lake? The borrowed view of the lake is going away because the house, the cottage is being moved and the house is getting an extension that will go all the way over to where the cottage ends. So that's starting this year. It'll probably finish up next year. So by next year, there will be no lake view for us to be preserving. So that's part of the reason why, why this is happening. So just a quick note on sort of how we're managing things. So right now we're in that phase where everything is get, we're watering um, every two days right now, the trees. Um, we're in that first, basically first two week phase where we're watering every two days. Um, actually, first week is every two days. Second week is probably every three days. Um, and then we'll back off on that. But once we get the shrubs planted, then I'm gonna put in uh, drip irrigation. I'm gonna rig up a whole drip line that will just connect to hoses just for ease of taking care of these because it's going to be this year plus most of next year watering these and obviously we want to we have to be really good on the watering here because we have super sandy soil so might as well hook up a drip irrigation but i'm not doing any of that until the shrubs get in so i know where the drip irrigation needs to be once drip irrigation is in then we will mulch after that and i'll show you what we will be using for the mulch so here is our wood chip pile all of these wood chips came from the trees that we took down to build that. So very much a full circle moment, but also the best mulch you can have. Not the prettiest, but the best, because this is made up of all sorts of um, sizes and there's greens in there and browns. And when you dig into the center of this pile, it's already smoking and it breaks down. And this will be perfect for um, that area. In particular with our sandy soil, this will add um, really good organic matter to that area which we really need in that area this is just really an exciting project for all of us um, and the best thing is is that the neighbors are as thrilled with it as we are um, which i was so happy with and it was important to us that they liked it as well because again it's on mostly their property um, and so it was just great to be on the same page and be all i mean they've been helping us out with this so much um, in fact, they've got all the equipment, they've got tractors and things, so they're the ones, and they've got the pile of leaf mold, of leaf mold that has been really helpful in here. So um, it's been a fun project, it's been a very nerve-wracking project, but we're thrilled with it. I hope you guys like it too. Do weigh in with what you think about the shrubs, because I'm sure there are shrubs that I'm sleeping on that I should be thinking about. Um, and I want to know what they are. So let me know in the comments what you think about the whole project, what you think in terms of some shrub additions that I should be considering. And then make sure you're subscribed and you like this video, um, not just so that you can see what I end up planting there, but also because it makes me feel good and I appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right, have a great day in your garden. We will see you soon.